Hello, this is Dr. Kingston, and in this video, we're going to talk about nasal cavity neurovasculature. Our objectives here are simply to describe the innervation and the vasculature of the nasal cavity. We're going to start off talking about the arterial supply. So the nasal cavity is sitting kind of smack in the middle of the face, um, and that is reflected in the neurovasculature that supplies it. So what we see here, I'm pretending that we've opened the face up like a book through the nasal cavity so we can look at both halves, uh, is that we have three different sources that all kind of converge on the nasal cavity to supply its walls. We've got contributions superiorly from the ophthalmic artery, inferiorly from the maxillary artery, and anteriorly from the facial artery. The branches from the ophthalmic artery are the anterior and posterior ethmoidal arteries. These branches originate in the orbit and then they travel through the medial uh, wall of the orbit to enter the nasal cavity. And there they are going to supply the regions highlighted in blue here for you. So that is anterior and superior nasal cavity walls, both medial and lateral. The branch from the maxillary artery that supplies our navel cell cavity is the sphenopalatine artery. And that is going to enter in through the pterygopalatine fossa and then through a hole in the lateral nasal wall called the sphenopalatine foramen. On the lateral wall, it gives off posterior lateral nasal branches. And those will travel on the surface of the middle and inferior nasal conchi and into their meatuses as well. The bulk of the artery then is actually going to jump over to the um, nasal, me uh, nasal septum. So it branches right here as well. But because we've got this open, we kind of have to imagine that it crosses over to here. It's not that big of a jump in reality. And then that is going to continue to travel down the nasal septum anteriorly and inferiorly and then it will pass uh, its very last little bit the incisive branch will pass through the hard palate and that was what supplied our anterior hard palate that we saw earlier in this session. Now those two arteries supply the bulk of the nasal cavity but the facial artery also sends a few branches into party. And it does this by directing them up through the nostrils. The lateral nasal branch of the facial artery comes up the lateral side of the nostril, and the superior labial artery comes up the medial side. All right, now on to nerves. When we think of nerves in the nasal cavity, we often think of the olfactory nerve first, um, but it actually has only a very small territory here. It's just this dark blue area highlighted on the roof of the nasal cavity and a little bit of the superior walls. The olfactory filaments from the olfactory bulb pass through the cribriform plate of the ethmoid through all those little cribriform foramina um, onto the roof and supply just this limited little region near their origin. The rest of the nasal cavity receives somatic sensory and a little bit of parasympathetic motor for its mucosal glands. It has a supply that is very similar to what we saw with the arteries, right? So we got same territories, essentially. The superior portions are once again supplied by a branch of the ophthalmic nerve. So we had ophthalmic artery. Now we've got ophthalmic nerve. And the lower portions um, are supplied by two separate branches of the maxillary nerve, or V2. The names of those ophthalmic nerve branches probably look very familiar. Uh, the anterior ethmoid nerve enters into the nasal cavity along with that anterior ethmoid artery, and they supply roughly the same territory. The branches of the maxillary nerve that supply the posterior nasal cavity also have a very close relationship with the branches of the sphenopalatine artery that we saw earlier. Uh, but they have different names. So here, again, we've got the pterygopalatine ganglion, and a bunch of the maxillary nerves branches branch directly from there, so they come down off of it. So we've got all of our palatine nerves here, and then we see we have some posterior nasal branches. So we have posterior superior, 
posterior inferior. Now, just like the bulk of that sphenopalatine artery jumped over to the septum, we find that the trunk of the nasopalatine nerve is going to do the same thing. And that's going to run with the artery down um, anteriorly, inferiorly across the nasal septum through the incisive canal and out the incisive foramen to once again supply the anterior hard palate. All right, and finally, just like we had branches, the facial artery peeking through the nostrils, we've got a couple of branches from the infraorbital nerve that do the same thing. These are just called nasal branches, and they supply the area around the nostrils. There is one little additional nasal branch that comes from the superior alveolar nerves, and that comes in kind of right above the incisors there. All right. So as you are studying, it is absolutely worth your while to put these neurovascular pairs together to get a full picture of what's going on here. So let's take a moment and do just that. We'll start off just by highlighting the olfactory nerve and the area that it innervates, along with the posterior ethmoid artery that supplies blood in the same area. Okay. Moving a little bit more anteriorly there, we find branches of the ophthalmic nerve and artery traveling together. So we've got the anterior ethmoidal artery and nerve. Moving inferiorly now, we've got branches of the infraorbital nerve and the facial artery that sneak in through the nostrils. So we've got internal nasal branches from the infraorbital nerve and the nasal branch from the anterior superior alveolar nerve traveling along with the lateral nasal branch of the facial artery that sneaks in the lateral part of the nostril and a little bit of the superior labial artery coming in medially. Now, what's left here are the branches of the sphenopalatine artery. So let's pop those up here. So remember, the sphenopalatine artery is going to enter into the nasal cavity through the sphenopalatine foramen, um, and it's going to give off some lateral nasal branches to the lateral wall and before it crosses over to the nasal septum and travels with the nasopalatine nerve. On the lateral wall here, these posterior branches are going to be accompanied by the posterior superior lateral nasal branch, which comes directly from the ganglion, and then that posterior inferior nasal branch that actually comes off the greater palatine nerve. All right. So it's worth noting here that most of these are traveling in pairs. I often find that it's easier to remember some of these if you can think of them as traveling with a little buddy to get to a specific destination. Um, and that will help put this all together as a big picture instead of lots of little pieces that don't always want to fit together nicely. The last thing that I want to touch on here is an anastomosis between the three arteries that supply the septum. So we have the anterior ethmoidal, the superior labial, and the sphenopalatine artery. This interconnection here is called Kieselbach's plexus, and it sits fairly anteriorly on the septum. Now, we need a large blood supply here to help warm and moisturize the air coming in, right? We already said that. We need something to supply the heat and the water to do this, and Kieselbach's plexus does a lot of heavy lifting in that regard. But because of its positioning, you know, kind of right there where your finger can scratch at it, it's also a really common site for anterior nosebleeds. So something to be aware of. And that is the end of the material here. So here is your review question. The posterior nasal septum receives somatic sensory innervation primarily from which nerves? Then the correct answer is B, the nasopalatine nerve. That is going to bring us to the end. Thank you for joining me.